All right, uh, James. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. I take it you can hear me okay. Um, tonight I would like to look at a subject um, from the Gospel according to St John. John chapter 1, we'll read the first 34 verses there. John chapter 1 and verse 1 to 34. In the beginning <laughs> was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing has been made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God, his name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all men may believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light, the true light that, cut, cut, that, that gives light to every man that comes into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came unto his own, but they that were his own received him not. Yet to those who received him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of the husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and dwelt, and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning, concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me, has surpassed me because he is before me. From the, from the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. Now there was a, now there, now this is the testimony of John when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask of him, saying, He did not fall to confess, but confess, but confess freely, I am not the Christ. And he asked him, Who are you then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you a prophet? He said, No. Finally, they said, Who are you? Give us an answer to, to take back to those who sent us. What, what do you say about yourself? John replied in the word of Isaiah the prophet, I am a voice of one calling in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord. Now some Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, why do you then baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor a prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one who you do not know, he is the one who comes after me, the thongs of whose sandals I am not un I am not worthy to untie. All this happened in Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, for the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. When John gave his testimony, I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down remain as he who were baptized with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and testified, testified that this is the Son of God. Amen. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his precious word. Let us um, commend ourselves to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you that, that Jesus did come and he revealed himself to man. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and for him and through him. And not one thing was um, made that has been made. 
He was the creator God. He was with you from all beginning. And this is the God that we come um, this evening, the same God that we acknowledge to be the Savior of the world. We just thank you for this time of year for me. Remember that Jesus was born in, uh, in a manger. He was born a babe in, in, in Bethlehem. And the angels rejoiced in the fact that the Savior had been born into the world. For unto you at this day in the city of David is a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And we just want to just reflect something of the the, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he means to us. So just bless your word to our hearts tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And actually what I was going to speak about tonight was John the Baptist. And John the Baptist had a very important uh, message to bring to the people. Um, but then when we look at John chapter 1, we begin to realize that if we read John chapter 1 and verse 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So we, this is where we see that um, we, we relate to that in, 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 in Genesis chapter 1, 2, with uh, the intention that like Jesus with the word of God, he was with God in the beginning. And there was nothing that had been made that had nothing that, that when God made the creation, Jesus was there too. He is He's not only just, um, he's a triune God. He's the one who, who, who has a relationship with the Father, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They were, all, they were all there in the creation of the world. And so the word became flesh. When we, when we come to Christ, um, Christmas time, we remember that Jesus came into the world as a baby. He humbled himself. He, he left the splendor of heaven and he came into this world to, to reveal who God was because if it wasn't for Jesus coming in the flesh, we wouldn't know who God was. God is a spirit and, and we recognize that because that God is a spirit, um, how, how, would we reckon, how would we recognize who God was apart from Jesus coming into the world and becoming flesh? And so John... John recognized that he was a cosmic significant word. He became, he became the eternal ultimate expression of God. In the Old Testament, he spake his final word through his living word. Jesus was with God in the creation. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that has been made. He was the light, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5 would say, John chapter 1 and verse 5 says that the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness was not, had not understood it. A comprehension of darkness. Well, yes, there was a darkness. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Comprehension, comprehending the light, the word. Kata Lamba, Lambano is capable of three things. Firstly, to seize, to lay hold on, to overcome. By this interpretation, verse 5 would read, the darkness does not gain control of it. Secondly, to perceive, attain, lay hold of with the mind, to apprehend with mental or moral effort, with the meaning of verse of this verse could be translated, the darkness is undeceptive and does not understand it. And thirdly, to quench, extinguish, snuff on the light by stifling it. Here the interpretation might be, the darkness is unreceptive and does not understand it. The darkness will never be able to eliminate that. Light and darkness are essentially antagonistic. The Christian joy is knowing that light is not only greater than darkness, but also that it will outlast the darkness. It is comforting to know that darkness can never put away, put out the light, and that ultimately the light will totally triumph over darkness. 
John chapter 1, verse 12. Sin is, sin was man, sin with man was living with interpretation of sin handed down from Adam. We've read, we've thought about Adam. Adam sinned against God. He could not understand all that God had originally intended for him. Sin had created a separation in man's relationship with God. A great chasm to be bridged by sending his son to die for human sin. Everyone who received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior crosses the gap to become a child of God. And as a child receives an inheritance from his father, we too will receive our forgiveness of sins and eternal life. We must recognize that we have a need of a Savior, confess our sins, and receive the gift of salvation that Jesus offers to us. Praise the Lord that Jesus can give us, he can give us eternal life that restores our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Peter also could say, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again with a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Since forgiveness of sin requires death as a payment of a payment, Jesus' death on the cross paved way for eternal life. The resurrection of Jesus Christ was a physical proof of the fact that Jesus was more than just a martyr who died for a cause. He was, in fact, the Son of God. The word begotten in this passage refers to fathering something. God's desire to restore relationship with man has provided a way for us to become his children. This will restore the original intentions that God had designed for Adam. As children of God, we will receive an inheritance not like the one of sin that we received from Adam, but the one of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Paul wrote to the church in Ephesians saying, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, that is the gift of God, not of works lest anyone should boast Ephesians 2, 5, 8 and 9. Salvation is a gift that comes from the grace of God. This unmerited favour towards us, through which he shows us his love, regardless of our imperfections. Although our salvation will ultimately make a difference in how we live, that is not the criteria for receiving it. Salvation is a gift, and simply, and 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 so simply, and we are the and we are so great that we would never have been able to afford it on our own. All we have to do is to accept it. Romans 10 and 9 says, For if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Belief. We have to believe the key is receiving the salvation from Jesus Christ is to believe and confess the reality this great Faith is. Faith is in trusting him to have faith in, to be fully convinced and to acknowledge, to rely on. It gives, it gives reliance upon and a personal trust that provides obedience. It includes submission and a positive confession of the Lordship of Christ. To believe God's, God means to take him at his word and trust him from Genesis to Revelation, to take him, uh, beg your pardon, requires that man and woman believe what he says. Unbelief, well, is the ultimate of, unbe uh, is the opposite of belief. Unbelief is the, is the opposite of belief, always carries with it consequences. So really, what, what John had came to do was to to baptize people and to to for people to recognize that they had a need of a savior they they had to 
they had to acknowledge their sins and does baptism save you no it just means that you are buried with christ in his death and when you rise from the water and you are raised to walk in units of life you're acknowledging the lordship of christ and that was john 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 was baptizing people that that were quite prepared to quite prepared to admit that they were wrong and they were sinners in god's sight and when, when jesus came into the world john the baptist said john the baptist said behold the lamb of god which taketh away the sins of the world and John had to get baptized with John in the river, in the river Jordan. Uh, and, and then God, and the Spirit of God came down from heaven like the Spirit of a dove. And, and a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That was God acknowledging that this was the Messiah, the Son of the living God. What a wonderful example that Jesus showed to us that we should. And be baptized if we acknowledge the lord jesus christ as our own personal savior then it's an outward showing that we belong to the lord jesus christ we are resigned to his lordship and we we give him the you know, give him our lives um, for us to 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 share with him in in heaven that that is a that's a gift a gift in itself that the lord jesus christ he paid the price for our salvation. And that's the reason why we can celebrate Christmas time because Jesus came in to reconcile the world to himself. And so that's my thoughts tonight on this, um, this chapter. There are many things that we could probably look at um, from, from John and the reading that we've just read. But uh, that's, that's all that I have to speak on tonight. Thank you very much. So let's pray. Uh, gracious God, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your word. We thank you that the word was made flesh and came and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We thank you for uh, uh, John the Baptist who came to witness to, uh, to that great event and to, uh, to be the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ to prepare the way. And we pray, Lord, you help us that we might be able in some way to prepare people for uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, to receive him as our Lord and Saviour. We ask, O oh Lord, your help and your guidance and blessing to us at this time of year. And we pray, Lord, your hand upon each one and your protection, Lord. We know for this great rise and great problems are throughout, <laughs> not alone Ireland here, but the whole British Isles. We pray your blessing. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen. Mm -hmm.